Hi class, Dr. Smiley here. Just want to check in before seeing you this Friday, before Dr. Ellis and I see you this Friday um, in clinic. Uh, looking forward to that, and I'm sure you're all looking forward to just getting started. Um, everyone, both this Friday, uh, the 8th, as well as Friday, February 15th, will have the opportunity to administer nitrous oxide on a class partner as well as receive nitrous oxide uh, from a class partner. Again, if you have any personal concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, if you'd like anything addressed, but looking forward to that. I also want to make sure that you received the announcement that to make up for the um, uh, snow day, um, I'm adding some time to each class, adding half an hour to each class. Uh, class will start at the appropriate time at 7.45 for that, that first group and at 10 for the next group. And we'll just modify our schedules a bit so that you do all get your complete um, experience with nitrous oxide. So um, no worries that way. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to do with this announcement was uh, review the quizzes. You've, you've completed three quizzes for this course. At this point, all there is to do is complete the final comprehensive exam. Um, that's going to be 50 multiple choice questions, different from the questions you had um, with the quizzes. And although you really did very well on all the quizzes, there weren't any topics that really seemed to trip folks up. Um, I picked a few questions uh, from each quiz just to review um, and, and touch base with. So um, I'm going to go through those right now, kind of a quiz review. Um, one question, uh, this question, nitrous oxide, oxygen sedation, significantly modifies uncooperative behavior in children. Nitrous oxide, oxygen sedation does not change physiologic me measures. For example, oxygen saturation in children. In fact, both of those statements are true. Obviously, nitrous significantly modifies uh, behavior in uncooperative kids. Whether children or adults, nitrous oxide sedation doesn't change physiologic measures. Um, so this example was oxygen saturation. Uh, examples that you received in lecture were blood pressure, heart rate, um, although blood pressure and heart rate may decrease while nitrous oxide oxygen sedation is being administered. It's not related to the drug itself. It's actually just related to patient relaxation. So the sedation itself does not change physiologic measures. Uh, what is the youngest age at which a pediatric patient can receive nitrous oxide sedation? There's no minimum age, any age, as long as that child can sit still and breathe through their nose. Um, to minimize your exposure, occupational exposure to nitrous oxide gas, that flow meter should be calibrated every two years. Of course, with any dental equipment, we want to follow the manufacturer's instructions. But the flow meter, where the gases are uh, flowing through, should be calibrated every two years. Another question was, what percent nitrous oxide is needed to achieve optimum analgesia and cooperation in most patients? And in fact, that's anywhere between 30 and 40 percent nitrous oxide um, for optimum analgesia. And you'll see that this week uh, as you sedate each other. Generally, our level of nitrous oxide is anywhere between 30 and 40%. Um, the next question related to the scavenging system. So the use of the scavenging system. The use of the scavenging system is desirable because it, it removes potentially toxic waste gas from the environment. 
Um, your other options, uh, a number of you answered, removes the nitrous oxide odor from the room. Um, in fact, the room should not have a nitrous oxide odor. If your room has a nitrous oxide odor, if you're getting that sweet smelling gas around, uh, you might have a leak in one of your connections and need to check that out. So. Um, Scavenging system does not assist patient respirations. Uh, that's our reservoir bag. So we want to remove the potentially toxic waste gas from the environment. Well, we want to keep your environment healthy. Which statement is false regarding the cardiovascular effects of nitrous oxide? Um, nitrous oxide use is contraindicated in patients with arrhythmias. The question was which statement is false. Um, this is false. Nitrous oxide is not contraindicated in patients with cardiac arrhythmias. In fact, there are no cardiac contraindications to nitrous oxide sedation. None. Where in the respiratory system does gas exchange occur, occur? That's in the alveoli, in the 300 million alveoli in the adult lungs, right? So inhaling that nitrous oxide gas, filling the alveoli with nitrous oxide uh, as we begin administration. The nitrous oxide diffuses from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries. You recall that? Again, nitrous oxide as a drug is not soluble. It is relatively insoluble, so it gets to the brain quickly. Uh, when we stop our nitrous oxide sedation and are administering 100% uh, oxygen, patients have nitrous in their pulmonary capillaries. It now diffuses into the alveoli and then is exhaled out. So gas exchange occurs at the alveoli. Um, and last but not least, this question related to um, chronic abuse of nitrous oxide. Tingling, numbness, difficulty in concentrating, and interference in gait represent chronic exposure to nitrous oxide. Um, I can see how uh, some of you thought it was appropriate exposure to nitrous oxide, certainly tingling um, around in the hands and feet, numbness around the mouth, um, some difficulty concentrating are certainly all the signs and symptoms we're going to be looking for um, in our uh, classmates on Friday. But um, this question related to the chronic exposure to nitrous oxide. So thanks for listening. See you Friday and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.